Jonathan had a tragic accident on a bicycle in India, of all places. It's a miracle that he's alive. When I'm all right now, there's not my injury. Then there's my dream for teacher. Teacher and sports star, of course. <laughs> that my big dream. I was to become a sports star, but that is not done yet. Before the accident, I was a young guy into sports, football, boxing, athletics, everything, swimming. But I've discovered so many things. I've discovered life. I, I was in bed for four months and I was thinking what it feels like to have a cold water bath. My name is Jonathan, and this is who I wanted to be before. In high school, some of my friends and I were only amateurs at the sport of extreme unicycling. But we made our goals the impossible. And sometimes, what seemed impossible actually happened. Slow down, slow down! Woo! Yeah! Oh! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yes! I had just turned 19 when I went to study abroad in northern India at Missouri Hill Station. This was to be my home for the next four months in the foothills of the Himalayas. But one morning, because I was late to class, I rode a bicycle instead of walking along the narrow, winding footpaths. My friends at Bible study had just finished reading Romans 8, verse 28. All things work together for good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Then they got a phone call from the hospital. I had fallen off a 70-foot cliff after my tires lost grip going around a curve. The only reason I survived the fall onto my head is that I landed next to a hospital and was seen by some workers on a smoke break. By nightfall, I was in surgery in Delhi eight hours away by taxi. I had crushed my spinal cord between my fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae, which left me paralyzed and without feeling in my fingers, most of my triceps, and below my arms. Five weeks later, after recovering from surgery, bed sores, and bacterial meningitis, I said goodbye to my friends in India and was flown home to Connecticut where I spent two and a half months at Gaylord Rehab Hospital. There I met Andrew, another quadriplegic near my age, who'd had a similar injury to my own three years earlier. Andrew understood what I was going through, and because he had already learned how to live with this injury, he was able to show both me and my therapist how I could help take care of myself once I went home. Three years later, my paralysis is the same, but I have gotten much stronger, and I can do most things myself. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, just that, bye. I've studied at a university for two years, and I've returned to India four times. <laughs> I can't seem to forget India, because that is where this new life began for me, in a wheelchair. Pune is home to India's largest military-run paraplegic rehabilitation center, strictly for veterans. There are no comparable rehab centers for civilians that can provide a home away from home. Were it not for the government, the helplessness of these veterans would have crushed their families. We are two brothers and two sisters. And my mom died when I was just six years old. At the age of 16, I joined the Navy. And after two years, I just met with this accident. And since I being the first employed from all the four kids, things have just started depending on me. 
but god's will you can do nothing to that the military has provided many resources for the quadriplegic residents here but they have not taught them independence because no one had known the techniques they needed someone to show them what was possible that even with most of your body paralyzed you could still get out of bed by yourself The first thing you need is a bed level to your wheelchair and low enough so that your feet can touch the ground. It took me a whole year before I learned how to transfer into my wheelchair without assistance. When I was still in the hospital, I first learned how to transfer using a sliding board, which creates a bridge between your bed and your wheelchair. Without lifting your body off the surface, you can shuffle yourself across the board. I came to Pune because Andrew had shown me the proper techniques, and here was a large group of potential future mentors. What we are really trying to promote is using your disability as your greatest strength so that you could be a resource for quadriplegics in other places in India. This was the first time that anyone here had seen a quadriplegic swim. I met with an accident while diving in the swimming pool. I hit the floor, broke my neck. The old memories were coming back. And I thought that I should Give it a try once more. Remove all those nightmares about swimming and then took the plunge in the water. Sports keep you healthy and are just as important as therapy for wheelchair users. Paraplegics easily play basketball because they have full function above the waist. But quadriplegics have limited use of their arms and hands as well. So for them, sports are not so easy. We push a chair for about a kilometer or two daily. And that's the only exercise we do have. Once in a year, we go out for some games. That's wheelchair race, maybe some discus throw, or a javelin throw, that's it. We don't play any, something which is really tiring. And that's very energetic also. Play ball. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. Back, I have been promoting quadriplegic rugby and the hope that India could someday form a team. And today was great to see them for uh, playing rugby. I think it would actually increase their cardiovascular system. And I just got a feedback from my patient whom I'm treating. He said, I felt hungry, I felt like eating, because he knows that uh, he's going to play tomorrow, so he has to have food. Uh, we never thought that we would be able to do that, that much. We are looking forward to playing it and give, give our best to it. For many others like Krishnan, the military has provided everything for them to live a decent life. But what really sustains them is that every morning they roll down the local street and they're not afraid to live life this way. One morning, I got to join Krishna. Morning, Krishna. Yeah, morning. Sorry about being late. It's okay, no problem. Let's go. Chalo. Yeah, chalo. First time when I went out, 
I used to see some boys going for the morning walk. Now their children have got married. So I am still their uncle to the son's uncle and to the grandchildren uncle. We are uncles for three generations now. We are like a milestone. It's permanent out there. हम लोग गए थे स्कूल की तरफ से मेरे फ्रेंड्स और मैं तो वहाँ पर सर ने मुझको बोला कि मैंने डाइव लगाई और फिर मेरा सिर ज़मीन पर लगा और फिर मेरी नेक में चोट आई मेरी नेक में C5 फ्रैक्चर हो गई Now your friends from school have you seen them have you been able to No No I don't meet with them the parents are say that you just cooperate in your studies you don't disturb your minds okay so i don't know this now i'm doing an overhead pass god <laughs> <laughs> try doing an overhead i'll come in closer yeah very good okay robin the idea of promoting wheelchair rugby began after I met Rahul during my first return visit to ISIC, one year after my accident. There were five of us with the same level of injury, Diju, Rajesh, Rahul, me, and Samir. But no one had been there to show them that they could still write, wedging a pen between their knuckles, or that they could transfer themselves using a sliding board. So for two weeks, I showed them everything I had learned that allowed me to pursue independence. Then I returned back to school, where I was playing wheelchair rugby every week. Andrew had introduced me to the sport while I was still in the hospital. And ever since, we had played alongside each other in this game that pushes you to the limit and changes your whole perception of being in a wheelchair. In December of 2007, with a grant from the Christopher Reeve Foundation, several family and friends helped me bring donated rugby chairs to ISIC, where they were refurbished and put to use by patients in India's first official wheelchair rugby match. Since then, the game has become the heart of ISIC's new sports therapy department. <laughs> Playing on a basketball court, you have to carry the ball from the center to your goal on the far side. When two wheels cross the goal line, your team scores. The higher you've broken your neck, the less mobility you have. So players are given a point value based on their level of strength and mobility. Each team can only have four players, representing eight points on the court at a time. Every 10 seconds, you have to dribble the ball or pass to a teammate. Stronger players try to carry the ball, while the weaker players work together to provide defense. The game ends after four periods of eight minutes. It's a common saying that, apart from all the rules, you just kill the man with the ball. So it's enough, let's call it a day. Chaloji, over! <laughs> After Rahul joined us for rugby practice, my mom and I went to his house in Delhi to see how he was progressing while living at home. Rahul and his younger brother used to have full-time jobs, but now Rohit has to stay home to help Rahul and neither of them are able to help their father support their family of six. 
the most important thing is that his family has made all the arrangement for the equipments which is i think the unique thing most of the patient once they are gone home they do nothing this is because lack of family support lack of resources so they don't arrange you know for example standing frame so his family is wonderful family financially his father is a government servant but even on in those limited resources they have very nicely taken care of him eventually he will be independent in few years i believe एक लड़का था उसने बहुत ज़्यादा दारू ड्रिंक कर रखी थी शराब शराब पी रखी थी तो वो मेरे अंकल से लड़ रहा था फिर वापस वो लड़का आया और बस उसे रोकने के चक्कर में जब मैं गया तो वो भाग के आया और उसकी जो शोल्डर था वो मेरी गर्दन पे आगे लग गया और मेरी स्पाइन प्रॉब्लम हो गई कब कब खो गई जितने भी दिन पर उठ गई की महफिल हो गई तनहाइट दिस इज जी ऑल राइट ऑल राइट नो प्रॉब्लम बट नो माई ब्रदर इज प्लेइंग क्रिकेट एंड आई एम अ वॉइस रोहित रोहित ओ रोहित दिस मैन criminal not police uh, in arrest i am complaint police station police station complaint court court what court yes. but my lost the loss my but my what uh, uh, my my brother is very bad condition my father is very bad condition my sister is very bad condition six six people one person pay Often we suffer when we do good. But God uses the evil to make the good better. Before he was killed, Jesus said, "There is no greater love than that a man lay down his life for his friends." Rahul did this for his uncle. It was a reminder to me that love never fails, and that if I choose to live for God and love others, God could use my mistake for good. But whatever our belief is, what we have in common is the helplessness we must endure, and the feeling that we're missing something in this darkness. something giving purpose to our pain see actually when i fell down and what i could see was uh, the sky and a few clouds floating so i thought maybe i'm already in heaven <laughs> but then the doctor came running and i realized that i'm still here because i could not feel anything below my head it was uh, difficult because uh, when i got injured awareness and information about spinal cord injury was very less i had to invent my own ways for everything yeah, this is the brake mm -hmm. this is the accelerator yeah. and this is the clutch i met navin at one of our practices when we first started rugby in delhi he had started an organization to help street children in addition to having pioneered quadriplegic adventure sports everyone has a disability just people in wheelchairs it's more obvious you know you are able to relate more to the street children now because of your accident because you know what it's like to be in a helpless position you know it is i i think for the children and plus uh, the thing is that uh, uh, if i had not met with an accident i would have been a soldier only yeah and maybe i would have got chance to do some small work here or there but uh, now my whole time is dedicated to this itself so i'm being able to do more After my accident, I did a number of different jobs, but uh, uh, one thing I was sure of that I was not going to settle down into one thing. So because I wanted to see life, and going through those jobs, I worked as an employee also with organizations working in the field of social work. So I got a sufficient amount of uh, contacts and support and everything. Then after that, I felt I should go ahead with it, and this is something which I always dreamed about.
this thing started one day i saw a small infant girl child just with a torn shirt and standing on the road and crying at night and people were just walking by so i felt that why is this child here they are not begging for themselves they are begging for the elders in the family the family the poor they might be laborers doing manual labor or something of that sort but the thing is if a child is able to collect a 100 200 rupees a day the people sending him will try to send more children there namaste 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 i identify with the problems of those kids because they are very vulnerable they are living in the worst of conditions they are exploited and uh, when we are helping a child we are actually helping improve a whole life I thought maybe I'm already in heaven. Then I realized that I'm still here. We must ask ourselves, what is the good reason that I'm still alive? In India and many other countries, The problem is that many of us with disabilities don't know what we're capable of doing or that we can make a contribution to society. We need to become visible in our communities to raise awareness of both our needs and our potential by choosing to live actively and publicly despite our limitations. We are helping to find and share the solutions. There's a lot of work to do. but if we do what we can i think our greatest gifts can come from our greatest nightmares perhaps not all of us will walk again but that's okay because our goal is something more than walking it's living forgiving and loving more deeply than we ever did before